Hello and welcome to my latest experiment. This happens to be a piece of 10 by 16 semi-gloss cardstock and I'm applying some art inks to it. Okay, so these are some dye-based inks, similar to the inks that you would find as re-inkers for um, your stamp pads and so on and so forth, but these ones are more of the art industry market. Okay, now I'm applying these in what will be a horizontal um, application representing uh, kind of different striations in the sky and water. And I'm not good at painting and I'm just doing this kind of loose application of these inks here, trying to see what I can get from it. Um, maybe a little bit of st strategy going into it. For the most part, I want things a little bit lighter where that lighter area is remaining there. Oh, kind of in the lower, I don't know, two-fifths of the scene or something like that. That's going to be my horizon, and that's where I want there to be a little bit more of a kind of a horizon light. Maybe from a, you know, from the, where the sun set or something like that, you know, post-twilight, or just something of that nature. Uh, just to give it a little bit of variation, okay? Um, applying these inks, not necessarily trying to put them on smoothly. I want the texture, I want some variation in here, so I'm going for, you know, a pretty loose approach. And that's all I could really do, too, because I'm not, you know, very proficient at doing um, this type of uh, painting. And I haven't done it for years and was never really that good at it anyway. Okay, now this is now um, an acrylic pearlescent ink, okay? They're, they're called pearlescent. I, I, I'm not quite sure what the brand uh, this is, but again, it's an acrylic paint as opposed to a dye. So it's a little bit more surface oriented and you can see the paint, I mean, this paint is still wet and the dyes are still a little bit wet, so it does look a little bit shinier from that. But these are pearlescent inks here. And one thing I forgot to do, maybe before I put on the pearlescent acrylic, is to spray the um, those dye-based inks that were applied just to get that kind of that water-reactive type of look um, in those areas. I like that kind of textured um, look to it. Going over the top of that, again, with some more of that pearlescent ink. And this one happens to be, well... I don't know, kind of a lighter blue color. These are acrylic inks, so they're a little bit, oh, I guess translucent. I wouldn't call them transparent, but they're probably closer to transparent than, say, opaque on the opacity scale. All right. So applying that on there, and uh, this is all an experiment, so I was happy to see that we could still see the um, those textures underneath here. Okay, now I'm applying some of this white pearlescent ink, okay? It looks pretty white there and silverish, I would say, more than white, um, just because of that reflective kind of nature of these pearlescent um, paints. I keep wanting to say um, inks, but they are paints. I was applying it with a brush, then I thought, eh, I'm going to try it with a paper towel here, like I've been applying a lot of my uh, inks lately, and I thought it worked really well. Uh, I'll probably use um, a paper towel in the future, you know, because my brush work has a lot to be <laughs> des desired. Okay, now I'm going in to the scene with a Memories black dye-based ink, okay? Later on in this video, I'll show you what it looks like when I apply some of the hybrid black on here. It gets a little bit darker, but just trying um, with some of the dye-based ink here first. I wasn't quite sure if it would uh, apply over the top of the acrylic paint. Not only acrylic, but pearlescent, so it has that kind of shimmery, I don't know what it is, mica or something like that. But it did apply over the top of this just fine, and adhere to the surface. It's staying the surface, which is how dye-based inks work. Okay, so my approach with this is I'm trying to give it um, the overall scene, kind of a, a little bit of a vignette, which, after I stamp my imagery, will contain the imagery from a compositional standpoint. It, it kind of frames it off really nicely. 
And not only that, when you put this kind of black, oh, kind of stain over the, uh, you know, the brushwork, especially if your brushwork is as feeble as mine, <laughs> you know, it hides the, the weaknesses of, uh, you know, that application, the brushwork application, okay? And, uh, you know, that's something that's, in my case, it's always a good thing. Okay, so going on with that, getting a little bit more, oh, kind of liberal with the application of the black. The bottom portion is going to be, uh, represent the water down there. Okay, so see, after I apply that black, I, you know, I was being careful to retain that lighter area. And right after I stamped this large foamy of the Lakeside Cove, and it's a pretty big stamp here. It's almost, I don't know, what is it, like eight inches across or something like that. It's big. Filling out the edges right there. And there you have it. And see that lighter area is right on that horizon area. A lighter area on the horizon, the, the tree silhouette stands out a little bit better. Okay, now going now that I know where, you know, the uh, imagery is going to be, where I can add the shadows around the rocks, etc., I'm going in with some additional ink. And in this case, let me see, I'm still using the memories, I think. No, okay, this is where I've gone to the hybrid. I can see the lid of that hybrid there on the right, the clear one. Hybrid ink is a combination of pigment and dye-based ink. Um, Oil-based pigment ink, that is, unlike, say, something like the Brilliance ink, which is a, a water-based, fast-drying uh, pigment ink, which could probably be used too, but this um, hybrid ink went, went on really well. Uh, by the way, I stamped out the Lakeside Cove image with the hybrid ink as well. I, you can use dyes. I, I just feel that um, a pig, pigment ink is going to stay more surface oriented and give us a, a nice dark impression, you know, because it is thick. And I don't know, I wasn't quite sure how dye would stamp over the top of, say, something like, a, you know, the acrylic um, pearlescent ink, too. Okay, this is just my standard um, Pines and Rocks, standard rubber stamp. 195G is in George. And I'm stamping this in a hybrid, no, oh, kind of blue ink, so they look more distant. Adding in some uh, kind of a Milky Way formation here. I'm stamping this at an angle, if you can see that right there. And uh, with the dye, I mean, the, uh, the watercolor, opaque watercolor paint of the Dr. Martens Bleed Proof White. Going in and adding some dot variation, size variation, I should say. Adding in some larger stars in there, especially on this really large piece. You can get pretty big with your stars, okay? Um, you can even go with the, the three millimeter if you want to. Okay, so adding those stars, kind of reiterating that Milky Way angle there, putting most of my larger stars within that band of stars, then adding some on the perimeter too, just to, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, add a different, additional layers in those darker areas. Adding in some highlights on top of my rocks. I was mentioning to the live stream people that when I added um, these highlights on my last video, with a similar scene to this one, um, it, they all disappeared after it dried. I think it's because the, the paper is still kind of wet, you know, with the, how much ink I'm using. Um, it just, the, the acrylic paint pen just dried and it was very transparent, my highlights. All right, adding in some foreground imagery here with the larger trees. I mean, just like I would do with a quarter page card using rubber stamps, doing this with the foamies here, just to kind of round things out. Um, from a distance standpoint, adding uh, larger scale objects to the foreground like that. And there you have it. There are those pearlescent inks there, kind of giving a little bit of a reflective quality to that um, sky and water, kind of looking like clouds um, illuminated in the certain angles <laughs> of light to the scene. Okay, thanks so much for watching.